morning, ladies and gentlemen, it is fit and proper that we acknowledge a great partner in our quest to achieve digitalization. This is a bank older than even Ghana, our motherland. But ladies and gentlemen, for all the years that they've been with us, they've shown leadership in their strides as leaders in digitalization. And ladies and gentlemen, with their SC Mobile, wherever you are on the face of the earth, you can seamlessly access your banking services and also transact from the convenience of your home or wherever you are. I give to you now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Ghana Bankers Association and the CEO of Standard Chartered Bank, Madame Mansa Neti. Good morning, um, Honorable Minister, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very happy to be here. Um, I would like to start by thanking the organizers of the CEO Summit. Um, for successfully bringing together as many CEOs and stakeholders to discuss um, and determine actionable ways of resolving some of the most pertinent economic and social issues. Um, coincidentally, the objective ties well with the stakeholder capitalism, which is the theme of my remarks today. So I'm moving away from digitization and I'm talking about um, issues that impact the society. Over the last decade, one phenomenon that has become abundantly clear is the increasing complexity and instability of the world characterized by significant socioeconomic and environmental challenges. We find ourselves in a world where stakeholders expect or demand that businesses make changes that enable them make a difference by serving a social purpose and making a positive contribution to society beyond delivering on their financial goals. And joining corporations and businesses to serve the interest of all stakeholders and the society to create long-term sustainable value is the essence of stakeholder capital capitalism. It may sound quite um, complex, but it's very simple. For the purpose of our theme, we would define stakeholders to include employees, customers, regulators, and the communities in which we operate our businesses in. The leading economist, uh, Milton Friedman, advocated shareholder supremacy, in which business executives worked for shareholders and were basically in business to make profits. He espoused the view that businesses existed primarily to earn profits and to ensure shareholder satisfaction. Recent global events, especially those in the past year, have made it increasingly clear that businesses exist to serve a purpose, to make products that improve the lives of consumers better, to preserve and restore the environment while promoting the well-being of their staff. To do this right, organizations like ours must first establish a clear purpose that defines its identity, why it exists, what it stands for, and how it is being perceived. According to Deloitte 2020 Global Marketing Trends Report, Purpose provides an organization a platform to build upon and a mirror to reflect its existence in the world. It is an organization's soul. The report emphasizes that purpose-driven companies witness higher market shares and grow on the average three times faster than their competitors while achieving higher 
employee and customer satisfaction. The idea and approach of companies defining their purpose gained momentum after Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, wrote a letter in 2018 to CEOs of companies in the firms he invested in, urging them to articulate the purpose of their companies and how it benefited stakeholders, including shareholders, employees, customers, and their host communities. He said, and I quote, without a sense of purpose, no company, either public or private, can achieve its poten full potential. It will ultimately lose the license to operate from key stakeholders. It will succumb to short-term pressures to distribute earnings and in this process, sacrifice investments in employee development, innovation, and expenditures, and that are necessary for the long term. Similarly, in recent years, business organizations like the World Economic Forum have advocated and created awareness of the way companies must think about delivering long-term value for their shareholders and stakeholders reinforcing the need for corporations to solve society's problems and provide more sustainable products and services. I was very happy to see that VRA is focusing on renewable energy. We have seen an increasing number of companies adopting environmental, social and governance priorities. Recent research suggests that companies with a purpose do have a better connection with their stakeholders and are better able to respond to changes in the world faster. As businesses, the need to respond to the issues facing our society and our broader stakeholders is now more urgent than ever. We are living and working at an extraordinary moment in time where the world is facing unprecedented challenges. In the last 12 months, it has been arguably one of the most difficult time for the entire world, evidenced by the pandemic and unprecedented global health, economic and humanitarian crisis. COVID-19 exacerbated key socioeconomic challenges and continues to widen the inequality gap. There's therefore no better time for companies to pivot and start driving purpose than now. Not just an advertising PR tool, but because it's the right thing to do for all our stakeholders. Authenticity of purpose and impact remain critically paramount. This was evident in 2020 when organizations in Ghana across and across the world rallied to address the humanitarian and health issues caused by the pandemic. It was spontaneous, authentic and impactful. Besides individual organizations taking up different challenges, we saw associations come together to support. For example, the Ghana Bankers Association, in addition to reducing rates and restructuring facilities for impacted clients, provided testing support for staff PPEs and relief packages for the vulnerable. Many of here, along with other companies, contributed to the COVID-19 Relief Fund, which supported critical areas such as building of the Ghana Infectious Disease Center and free treatment of COVID patients, among others. We have all realized, though under unfortunate circumstances, what we as businesses can achieve we focus on serving with purpose 
and commits to making an impact. As leaders of our businesses, our purpose must appeal to our workforce and must be continuously communicated and embedded throughout the entire organization. As we drive purpose, we must make our C-suite executives and mid-level managers long-term owners of the purpose and monitor the delivery. In defining our purpose, we must view stakeholders as partners in the journey and ensuring that we are driven by empathy. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share the Standard Chartered experience of profits and purpose. Standard Chartered has been operating in Ghana for over 12 decades, and this year, we celebrate our 125th anniversary. Being the oldest bank in Ghana, we have a rich history that straddles the entire span of the history of banking in Ghana. As a financial institution, our success has always been tied to the success of our communities and the clients we serve. Our journey over the last 12 decades has focused on driving long-term sustainable development, enhancing health and well-being of our communities and our people by putting our capital where it is needed most to drive commerce and prosperity. In today's volatile world, we recognize that trade and capital flows are failing to address and oftentimes may exacerbate some of the key socioeconomic challenges of our time, which should not be the case. Leveraging our robust compliance and risk management capabilities, we continue to partner with our regulators across the globe, including Ghana, to protect the integrity of capital flows within the global financial system by mitigating risk related to fraud, financial crime, and cybersecurity. We believe it is possible to drive commerce and prosperity without leaving people behind, destroying the planet, and creating divisions that diminish the sense of community. As we mark this milestone anniversary, we are raising our ambition of our purpose, which is now more critical than ever. We are convinced that we have a dual responsibility to drive profits and purpose, and we are aligning our strategy and its wider impact by connecting it to the big issues facing our world today. We aim to deliver better outcomes for our clients, employees, and our communities by contributing to raising standards and supporting the fight against climate change while playing a part in reducing poverty and inequality. Our ambition is to embed sustainability and responsibility into everything we do as a bank and to be the leading private sector catalyzer of finance for the SDGs where it matters most. This vision is reflected in our decision in 2020 to elevate sustainability as one of our core pillars of our strategy by focusing on three pillars, sustainable finance, responsible company, and inclusive community. We believe we can deliver sustainable prosperity in line with our valued behaviors. Never settle, better together, and do the right thing. As well as our brand promise to be here for good. This approach is framed around a sustainable, a sustainability philosophy that informs our decision-making position statements that set out our environmental and social standards. Our Here for Good brand promise reflects a commitment to doing the right thing and a relentless dedication to existing for the long term. 
Quoting Jose Vinales, chairman of Standard Chartered Group, now more than ever before, we must lead with our purpose. We need to use our unique capacity to work across boundaries, connecting capital, people, ideas, best practices, both locally and globally. We can accelerate our strategy and its wider impact by connecting it to the big issues facing our world today. In response to COVID-19 pandemic, Standard Chartered Bank announced a one billion not-for-profit facility to help clients produce goods and services to fight COVID-19. And we have had a number of Ghanaian companies benefiting from this fund. We have subsequently seen a significant growth in demand for sustainable finance products in recent times, underscoring the fact that investors are demanding this change. Last year, we released a report on the socio-economic impact of our lending to the manufacturing and infrastructure sectors in Ghana. The, the study tested a new approach to measuring impact aligned with our sustainability aspirations. The study revealed that our lending to the two sectors has supported over 100,000 jobs and contributed 1% of Ghana's, to Ghana's GDP. It has also recommended sharing our approaches to climate change mitigation with clients to improve environmental impact. To this end, we will continue to deliver sustainable finance solutions and will be directing more lending to renewable energy projects and to infrastructure finance with positive environmental outcomes in mind. For our communities, we support greater societal and economic inclusion by improving access to finance, by empowering underserved groups through our community programs, focusing on vulnerable and disadvantaged young people. We realize that inequalities within and between communities remain a challenge. The recent pandemic made this situation worse, reversing decades of social and economic progress and widening the inequality gap further. Young people and vulnerable communities were among those heavily impacted by the pandemic. All of our community programs, Youth to Work, Goal for Girls, Women in Tech Incubator aim to build young people's skills and confidence and network, provide access to finance and create an enabling environment by helping to break down barriers that prevent the marginalized from participating in economic life. This aligns to our purpose. For our employees, another critical stakeholder is our employees. Employee well-being has never been so important, and the events of 2020 has brought this to the fore. As an organization, we need to look after people. Spending a little more on staff, providing assistance for their mental and psychological well-being will certainly go a long way in increasing productivity and lead to good performance. When it comes to employee well-being, we may have to give up a little on cost and treat them fairly. The negative impact of COVID-19 provide provided us with an opportunity to accelerate our pursuit of better productivity and potentially better world of employees across the group. The ultimate overnight shift to a more flexible working arrangement with about 80% of our staff working from home at the height of the pandemic yielded financial benefits and greater diversity, inclusion and wellness among our colleagues. As we focus on our stakeholders, it is abundantly clear 
that will be creating long-term value for shareholders and investors. Ladies and gentlemen, stakeholder capitalism requires a concerted effort by the entire organization, starting from board, management, and employees. Good governance is vital to understand, respond to, and manage our stakeholders' priorities. The board of directors is responsible for ensuring that high standards of responsibility businesses are maintained and receives information to identify and assess significant risk and opportunities related to the environmental and social matters. In conclusion, I'll just say the pandemic has and the shift in investor pre preference have catalyzed the need for businesses to contribute meaningfully to society. It has set the stage for the companies to become more purpose-driven. Ladies and gentlemen, it is clear that governments alone cannot solve the issues facing humanity and increasingly society looks for answers from the private sector and expecting companies to address broader societal issues. Caring about the society and stakeholders should not be at the expense of our profitability. If done right, it should be an enabler for our generation of sustainable profits. Um, I would look forward to an engaging session this afternoon um, by my colleagues on the panel about what more can be done to understand our businesses at the ground level to better define and communicate their purpose as organizations. Make our leaders long-term owners, cultivate the spirit of excellence, view of our stakeholders, view our stakeholders as partners, and monitor the delivery of purpose. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, 125 years of authentic purpose and impact, compelling case of profit and purpose, Standard Chartered Bank, and the CEO, ladies and gentlemen, Madame Mansa Nete. Please appreciate her with another round of applause.